you know, you're broadcasting for the UK, it's, so this could be important for for uh, everyone out there, is that, like, I was actually born in London. Stop it! Doc, TC5, he's so, like, he's so into history himself mm. that, like, and he's very rigid about where your arrows go. And one of the things that was passed down from him, uh, passed down to him to me, that was passed down from, I believe, Dandi and Rambo Z to him was like, yo, your arrows can't be facing in because you're destroying yourself. He's like, he explains it like you're battling. You know, it's like, it's just like you're going to war and, and your arrows are your weapons, right? Whether you're, whether you're bombing it or whether you're, you're painting it as a style writer, Mm-hmm. I believe, like, if you do it enough and you understand foundation, you can also break the rules. You need the Kellervision app. 24 7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Instagram UK Frontline. Beatbox created. Killer Keller. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast. Transmitting live to you in yours. Big shout out to graffitikings.co.uk. Hold tight to Strain Station. Um, and of course, everybody that's got the Television app. Big shout out to yourself. Sharing is caring. You know exactly what to do. You've got to spread the word. We're doing it for our elves and more. We're doing it for the culture. Um, transmitting live, uh, we are talking to a style definer. We're going over to the East Coast, to New York, to the legend that is Wayne One, COD inside the place. How are you, my brother? I'm good, Kells. I'm good. Thank you. Thank you for having me on the show and thanks for being patient, man. I know, you know, us New York Bronx guys, man, man, we... We take so long to do everything, man. So I apologize for that. But, New York but we're, here, we're here now. We're here. We're in full effect. Absolutely. And I tell you what, the the the, the patience that I've I've had to um come to terms with has just led me to like to so much ah, looking forward to seeing you and looking forward to chopping it up. Good man. It's uh we've certainly got some stories to cover. And oh my god, I mean 40 plus years in the game. Uh, yeah, just, just about now. forty, about a about a year short of forty years consistent. That's incredible. I mean, what, like, I, I think I think to 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 a larger extent, when you think about how far graffiti's come, the internationalness of it, the internet of things, and how it's consumed, and you know, it, we often forget about those original pathfinders, those trailblazers, those people that. Were really there from inception and you must you've seen it grow so much bro you've seen you've seen it from the jump to now that must be quite a trip in itself huh absolutely absolutely I, I mean the thing is you know when I got into graffiti which was like basically when I, I first started writing actually in 83 around my neighborhood and then I started painting painting subways in in uh, 84 but prior to that I had been watching subways since uh since like uh 70 77 wow 77 wow. 78 as a kid um and reason being and and just you know you're broadcasting for the UK it's, so this could be important for for uh everyone out there is that like i was actually born in london stop it yeah 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 what? I, know, I know you know that man i know you know that <laughs> <laughs> it's because actually, you're multicultural bro you got multiculturalisms in you you know yeah, I was born in West London because, you know, uh, the British was, you know, I was from the Caribbean and a lot of these islands was was colonies of, of, of Britain. Right. For sure. And um, so I was born. My parents met in the UK. I was born in West London. And then and then what happened is um, they came over to the United States and they brought me and my brother. Um, you know, I mean, prior to we lived a few years in, in a, on a small island called Grenada. Um, 
I'm London, West London right here. We are transmitting West London. It's right. Oh, wow. Okay, so it's, there, there you go, right? The lineage is real. How, how, how small of a world is that? So then what <laughs> happened is, the, 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 you know, and, and like I only, you know, uh, you know, I've told this a few times, but really I think it's important because of, of Britain, right? Because when I came over, what I noticed right away was graffiti. Mm. That's the thing that I noticed right away because we lived in the North Bronx where the subways was elevated, which meant it ran above ground on, on these kind of like steel tracks uh, for those that don't really know. Um, but I know in London, they have also elevated tracks. So, excuse me, from my window, I was able to see see uh, these trains painted and got uh, infatuated with the, with the color and the energy. And, and what happened was I loved it since then. And once I started going to school, in the Bronx, in the United States elementary mm-hmm. school, I met kids that their brothers was doing it. They explained to me what what I was really looking at and who who was some of the the major players. So I, I I would like to say, like for me, like I didn't really I can't say my call myself a pioneer or any of that. I won't even call myself old school from where I'm sitting, because when you look at like the pioneers, guys like, you know, phase two, you know, sure. riff you know, uh, Stitch One, a lot mm-hmm. of the really early guys. And and even, you know, when I studied and started going a little deep and started traveling, I mean, if you look at a guy like Cornbread, you know, oh, going wow. to the yeah. really early guys that mm. pioneered it, like, it's like, wow, you know. So so those guys is off to the races. One of my favorite guys from my neighborhood that I used to look at was Blade from the Crazy Five. To me, to me, he's one of the all-time legends, really. Yeah. You know, so... So from there, and then 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 I started getting my hands dirty by looking at guys like, you know, Rolio. And then, like I said, some of these names to, to to some of the listeners might be really foreign, but if you if you really take time to to study the history, you you'll see that some of these guys they they really led the way for us, and um, and then we 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 learned from them uh, things was passed down from 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 guys that they passed it down to, and then down to us. And then we were off to the races painting subways, um, and it just became it just became an uh, uh, an addiction. That's all I wanted to do was you know paint subways and rack rack paint. In those days, you had to steal your paint. You know, people sometimes mm-hmm. they go, "Oh my God, rack your paint! Oh, that's crazy!" Like, "Oh, you know, you're you're a criminal." But mm-hmm. really, pe- people didn't have money to to you know spray can at that that time was like you know I don't know a dollar ninety nine or something. Um, and if you're going to do a piece back then, you do a piece a full color piece, you know, uh, four to six cans or, or, or eight cans mm-hmm. for, for a nice, you know, window down or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. but, but in the beginning we started off doing, you know, two color names and, you know, you're filling your outline and just trying to, to, to get a gist of what was really going on, you know, get, get mm-hmm. your hand style going and you get your throwies going. And, um, it, it was, it was phenomenal, man, because we, there was so many, so many talented, writers yeah. you know and, and and when i say talented man i mean so many people that and i'm sure in, in 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 the in the in the british scene there's a lot of guys like that too that that no one even heard of yeah yeah now for sure. but 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 they inspired um a lot of the scene you know um yeah. but some some of my favorites is like 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 i would say when when i really first came out my man rolio tcs and mm-hmm. uh scene tc5 mm-hmm. Uh, obviously Tat's crew was Tat's crew was really killing the game. Guys like BG183 and uh Bio and of course Nice and, uh, and, and other Tat's crew guys as well. Yeah. Used, was a huge fan also and still is a huge fan of T Kid, the work oh. of T Kid. He was he was just yeah. so way ahead of the game. Mm. You know, um, and it's funny, you you had the name Kel. Kel first, you of know, course. rock stars and yeah, you know, of guys, guys like that and shy. So, 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 you know, it's, 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 it's a lot, it's a lot of people that have contributed to the, to the culture before me. And as long as I have, and, and guys that come even now, so many young guys doing it. So I like to For think sure. of it as our, our culture, man. So, you know, well, yeah. And you know what? It, and it translates across all the boundaries of hip hop for one big up master ace for connecting us because you know, he, again, like he transfers skills and abilities from into 
graffiti, but he's an MC. And we were actually talking before we jumped on about how much of a dude he is and that, you know, not it, as part of a hip hop discipline, especially of an era, there's not many MCs that, that give, give writers the props, but also partake in it as well. That's, that's a, Absolutely. you know. Absolutely, Absolutely, man. Much, much props and respect to Master Ace. I mean, um, before I even met him, I was, you know, just a fan of his music. And um, one, you know, one time, one day, my man, Louis 167, Hard Rocks. Yeah, all tight. No, no street bombing in New York. Louis was one of those dudes that really put it down in the streets and just not a guy, a nice guy, but a guy you don't want to fuck around with. Louis was like, oh, hey, you know, he started in the 90s. He was going bombing with uh, Master Ace was writing Ace, A-S-E. That's it. And uh, he was going bombing with with Louie and, and also uh, some of the other HR guys, Chad, which is Chatty Open Crew, mm-hmm. and, and um, you know, a bunch of other guys like uh, Cy HR and just other, 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 other guys in the 90s that really put the work in, you know, soldiers, yeah. of, you know, street soldiers walk the streets and really bombing because that was slightly after the train era. Um, and, and that's interesting. Did, that's interesting you say that. So after the train yeah. era, when the trains weren't, you weren't able to go. So the, it really took to the street. That was that was a transitional phase. Would you say? Yeah, yeah. I would say eighty nine was eighty nine. The last subway train ran in eighty nine, mm. and then and then a lot of newcomers, so called guys that started writing, they took to the streets. So it was actually a three sixty resurgent because in the beginning, in the early seventies. Guys were painting on the streets. Then it went to subways, and then like like towards the end of the subway era, which is eighty nine, mm. people that started then started a lot. A lot of the guys that painted in my era from from the subways, they kind of slowed down and they stopped. They died out painting a lot mm. of you know because they were th- they were thousands of writers, right? So a new a new breed of writers came up in the streets in the nineties, you know, and and right. and um. You know, uh, Louis was was one of those guys from Hard Rocks, and there was other guys who painted subways that that did the transition, like guys like uh, Jaws, Easy, um, guys like TK. Mm. Those guys painted subways too, mm. but 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 when they when they hit the streets in the nineties, it was like holy shit! You know, it, it was people really checked for their name and 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 they know who I'm talking about. Guys like that. Wow. Really, so know, they got they commercial just, they just pretty quick, huh? Every, yeah, they just walked every neighborhood, every neighborhood, every block, and just got up. Wow. Which, which, which and back in those days, it was really hard to do because, you know, you just can't just walk through every neighborhood bombing, man, you know? Yeah. It, it, it's not an easy thing to do in, in those old New York days. Mm-hmm. But, but no, uh, big ups to Master Ace, just a humble dude, man. I, I give him so much props, even when mm-hmm. I see him. You know, whether in you know New York in the present day or mm. you know in, in Europe last time, like I think I was telling you, I saw him in in the I believe it was the south of Norway, which is Stavanger, a city called Stavanger. Damn, was, okay, oh, yeah, he was opening up for for MOP, Woo! and um, <laughs> you know he came off stage, and I just I just went over. I hadn't seen him in like I don't know ten years, so I mm. went over to say hello, and he he was very greeting, and and uh, it's always always props to guys like him and. And Gangstar and those dudes because they they've always showed me so much love and 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 and, and uh, supported the culture just humbly you know humbly yeah, when yeah, you see them so hundred percent big up big up to those guys big up to them guys um I think Master Ace kind of gave me the, the 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 best compliment like obviously putting me in touch with you. Uh, through recommendation but when I first reached out to him because me and him go back we used to do tours together in in Europe mostly and nice. um, yeah and he and. He, he obviously knows who I am and he knows I'm doing a podcast, but he, I asked him if he wanted to come on and I didn't even want to talk about his career. I just wanted to talk about graph with him. And he, <laughs> he hit me up, bro. He hit me up. He goes, he goes, you know what? I normally say no to podcasts, but because you're talking about graffiti, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> no, and that was he, it. <laughs> yo, he, he's such a solid dude, man. Like, 100%. And, and it's funny because back then, like what I know from him, not, not him telling me or anything, but just me following his career and his, his even before he started his career. So basically, I believe he went to he went to school, meaning college, like in Rhode Island, mm. from what I know, which mm. is which is maybe three hours north of of New York. But he's like one of he's one of those guys from that era that 
that eighties era that was actually got an education. Not too many people went. You know, a lot of us ran the streets, and then after high school, if we if we if we even made it through high school, um, we we went and got a job, or we we did we did whatever we can we could. Mm. You know, we wasn't we wasn't built for 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 going to university or whatever. Um, but he, you know, he went to school. He got an education. Then he st- he came out and started his career, from what I know. And when you listen to his lyrics. Just like mm-hmm. if you listen to uh, Guru, man, even to this day, you can you can you can hear, you know, the words that everything means something. Yeah, and it's it's really it's really deep, you know. So so it it kind of it kind of shows, hey, you know, um, getting you know, getting educated is not a bad thing. Hundred percent, hundred percent, and in the same sentiment with with Graf and um, the the word is important, the name is important. How you execute that word is it, it, it it's all or nothing. It's it's quids in. You're you're going for the gusto to to amplify that word. In so many different ways, that in itself, like Graf has its own educational properties. Oh, absolutely. You know, absolutely. Absolutely. And and one of the reasons, you know, like I told you, you know, I I definitely big you up for doing the podcast is is for 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 guys like us to just educate people on the culture. And, you know, especially, you know, where I look at uh, where I think I stand in, in, in the whole and the whole global scene is more of a more of an educator, like you know, like KRS and a teacher, mm. you know, sharing sharing these experiences that we we experienced in the early days before the internet was was full circle, before the world was so small through social media, you know, sharing mm. these experiences with with younger generations, because uh, you know, history kind of repeats itself. Like I feel like we 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 kind of live, you know, I'm repeating a cycle that may be older. A older generation might have and and if i can give some insight to to the culture and style and history and mm. foundation um it's, it's 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 just as important to me as it should be important to to, to a younger generation to to kind of hear and learn a little bit um about it so they can continue doing you know where we left off and, and take it you know just keep keep leveling up take it to another level hopefully yeah, you know, yeah. You know, that's that's the key, right? Uh, you know, I, I live through younger writers seeing like, you know, if guys are getting out there and they're putting in the work in the streets and they're bombing, if I see them, I always big them up man, and say, yo, mm. man, I see what you're doing out there. It puts a smile on my face because, mm. you know, um, it's kind of like passing the torch, so to speak. So, um, yeah, for and sure. Then, and then we and then we move on to to uh to different things. Like, like, I feel like now. Sometimes people people hire me to do workshops, or or you know I'm doing I'm doing these large scale abstract murals. Um, in my in my work, you still see the foundation mm. of the lettering. Mm, mm, mm. You can still say, oh, you still see well, it, I, yeah. 100%. That's a Wayne ism. That's a Wayne ism. You know, yeah. people say, yeah, you know, because you know you never want to lose uh, foundation. You never want to lose yourself as as you evolve. You know, I feel like. You know, you can evolve, but you can still be you and still be what you represent, which is we still represent graffiti, man. And and mm. it, 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 it means it's, it's really it really means a lot, I think, to, to each 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 one of us in our own yeah. way, as well as a, as a whole. And, um, you know, we got to keep inspiring each other to, to keep pushing, man. And, 100%. And, you know, so. Mm. Um, yeah, man. Let's get into the, let's get into the foundations of things because you, yeah. you said that word and it almost like my, both my ears pricked up. <laughs> I'm like, yo, okay, right. So because obviously each one teach one, and that is that is something that you hold you, you know your crown to. And I've never known I've never known a scene more uh, receptive to passing on tradition than graffiti. Like MCs, you kind of got to guess along as you go and like no one's, everyone's got an ego. They don't want to tell you too much, but you know, because you don't want to be better than them, you know, as you're like yeah. that. <laughs> um, but there is, there are some, there are some standout qualities that I think, um, like you say, Wayneisms. Um, I want to get into arrows. I'm just going to go layman's on this. Arrows, you know, there's there's a certain code of conduct 
con- conduct with arrows in pieces, correct? Talk to yes. me about that. Talk to me about that. So, so, so arrows from, 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 you know, in the beginning, you know, you're just putting arrow any way, any which way, right? Um, and one of my mentors, uh, Doc TC5, you know, like I said, you know, b- big ups to Doc TC5, but also one of my biggest mentors is obviously Dero, um, mm-hmm. TFA, uh, TC5, who we did a lot of trains together, also a partner, but he was, he was a really strong mentor. Wow. But, but Doc, it was funny because because Dira I spent a lot of time with and 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 I think it just kind of things rubbed off you know mm. um, because he never really it's not like he sat I mean if something was wrong he would say it but but he he really he really was uh, cool enough to 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 let me do my own thing mm. um, unless you were doing it wrong but I remember one time Doc TC five he's so like he's so into history himself mm. that like. And he's very rigid about where your arrows go. And one of the things that was passed down from him, uh, passed down to him to me, that was passed down from, I believe, Dandi and Rambo Z to him was like, yo, your arrows can't be facing in because you're destroying yourself. He's like, he explains it like you're battling. You know, it's like, it's just like you're going to war and, and your arrows are your weapons, right? Uh-huh. And, and that like, which which people really say stems from you know Ramosi passed it on to Dandi and Dandi passed it on to him. It really stems Crazy. from from Ramosi like it's a battle, yeah. you know. And so your arrows always has to be facing out. Mm. Um, and before before I met him, I it's not that I, I don't think my arrows is always facing in, but but um, I, I believe in the early my early beginnings of style, I was. I was learning from Dero and, and Poem because I spent a lot of time with them. And then I was I was also spending time with the FC crew, guys like West FC, mm. you know, and 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 I met also K's FBA. Um and I believe like it's it's funny because these guys have a huge influence influence on the world on graffiti, even to this day. It's just that mm. people don't know it, you know. Because what happened is from subway art, maybe people might have copied that broken arrow with that line in it. And mm-hmm. I, I always thought that was an FBA thing. The way the way you see the sad case car yes. in, in FBA in, in subway art. Yeah. It's an FBA thing. And those mm-hmm. guys was TC5 as well. People didn't know that TAC FBA and K's. They also went to school with seeing TC5 and Dose. <laughs> and also like Mayor yeah, TC5. Wow. And, and Lady Pink. Mm. And um there was there was other writers, many wow. other writers, Ernie New Wave. But not to get off the subject, what happened was that break actually comes from from, from early seeing TC5 stuff. That's why if you look at early seeing TC5 and Dose, you see that break. And people are like, oh, I thought that's an FBA thing. Was really was really a TC five thing, wow. but but FBA kind of pushed it. K's was an, an exceptional person. He took it further, yeah. right? And the world saw it through through some of those amazing cars that you know that was in in in, in subway art where Henry took those photos, like mm-hmm. like that sad K's car, and I believe uh, there was another FBA car with with the uh, the sun. The sun, something. It was with the, with with the, the Donkey Kong. So mm, I think, I oh think my to god, most yeah, people, yeah. I think to most people that 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 are b boys and you know are in the culture of hip hop. I think they gravitate to that aggressiveness of 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 letter forms. Yeah, 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 yeah. For sure. You know what I mean? Like it's funny because when those guys did that, it had it probably had nothing to do with hip hop. Because really, graffiti mm. graffiti was was really the the first. Um, element because it was mm. there first, you know. 100%. Whether, these, whether these guys want to admit it or not, um, and it's not only I'm saying this. Earlier writers have said this. Guys that guys from the from the from from the mid '70s have told me like, yeah, you know, um, and um, they were like, no, 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 we we were here first. And and even if you see, but Blade Blade was never, he was never into hip hop. Mm, mm. You know what I mean? I mean, he was in he was he was into rock and roll. So whatever. 
I mean, I think I still think graffiti's part of hip hop. If if you're part of hip hop, hundred percent. And I must right. might just add as well where 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 this arrow conversation comes from. I got big up Merck, Causa, and uh, and Funk on the subject matter because that I, I received some intel on it, and I was like, man, there's only one person I can ask about this because like. It's interesting how far back that goes. Like you say, you know, Rem L Z and you know, that's just that's a huge like that's an early adopted idea that that comes all the way up to now. And it, it just interests me how, you know, that unwritten uh fact, but when you see it in its placement, like an arrow being the way it is, of course it's like, you know, two machine gun turrets like just firing yeah. out to the sides. It's cold. Yeah, yeah. So I think I think I think when when Doc passed that information down, I took the heart and I, I started working on on stuff that I you know if I happened to do an arrow pointing in by by just by by just doodling I would mm. I would I would change it because I would remember things that he would talk about, and so I really think like Doc, uh, those you know Dandy guys mm. like like that obviously Ramsey. So it was also so that was one one thought process about it. And also with Doc, it's also a, a mathematical problem. Hmm. They they also look at it as like the way you, you place your arrows, like and it's funny because even before he was telling me this, like if you look at like like sometimes in just even in, in, in subway or different different writers, sometimes what you see on one side of the piece might mirror on the other side of the piece, meaning like the way the arrows are or the pumps extend, it might mirror what's on the other side, right? So, so it's so symmetrically it's, like, it's in balance. Yeah, which is like balancing. I think I think any any writer that uh, um I don't, uh, whether you're doing a traditional style or a non-traditional style, you see hundreds and thousands of writers, even to this day, they might not know what they're doing, but they're balancing the 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 the, 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 the form of the word. You know, wow. you know their name. They're balancing it. So, and the way he was explaining that is a lot of that has to do with mathematics. Those, you know, even though people might be getting inspiration from certain writers and not really notice. So, this mm-hmm. is a lot about these guys talk a lot about that. And, um, you know, like I said, he passed down certain things by by telling me, and I always try to keep a sensibility of it. And, um, but also, I believe if you really, really or a practitioner of 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 star writing and of graffiti. Whether you're mm. whether you're bombing it or whether you're you're painting it as a star writer, mm. I believe like if you do it enough and you understand foundation, you can also break the rules. That's what I that's what I've come come to you from doing it sick. for so long. Mm. You know, I believe that there's times when and and when I'm doing like uh, what I call the deconstructed style, like styles that are, you know, these large scale murals that like, you know, there's, 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 there's bits and pieces of foundation. Mm. I believe that like from doing that and even things before that, just playing with that stuff. I believe that like, if you, if you really, really have done style enough, then there's certain things that you can break away from and, and certain things that you can keep. Like, like I do, you know, a lot of people know me for, for obviously writing Wayne, W-A-N-E. And then people, people know me from writing no can or W, which was show up for knowledge in the mm. early days with Dero. I did a lot of no pieces, mm. which, which t- to me, that was really my battle name. You know, if I, if I'm painting on a wall with someone or I'm painting a train with someone and I do a no piece, I'm, 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 I'm you know, I'm psyching you know myself on. out to, I'm psyching myself out to battle. I'm really battling. That's but, all that but, shit. But, but I'm never, I'm never really gonna, I'm never really gonna say that, mm. you know, because in, in in New York, you know, a lot of guys, you know, like I said, you know, you know, you you go do a piece with Dero, I mean, and Poem and those guys, they yeah. they not, they're not gonna say they're battling. But as Doc said, it's always a battle. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. it's always a battle. Totally. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so if I feel if I'm feeling, you know, by my Wheaties or whatever, I'll, I'll come out with a with a, <laughs> with a, with a <laughs> you know, a no piece. I'll come out with a no piece because I I could because I, I could really make those letters dance. It's one of my favorite names when I'm painting style. Um, and then I have my hymns name. Hymns. Hey, or in, oh. in the be- yeah, in the beginning it was H I M, him. Like him was there, him was there. And then I, you know, I met a guy one time, rest in peace, 
I think it, you know he write to me. You know, Rest he came to the bench one day, mm-hmm. call me, call me hymns. So I like that I added the S and um it stuck, right? Mm, so that must flow more, nice when you tag it. That must flow really nice. Yeah, yeah. And hymns is more like like the 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 bomber. Mm, I can he see why. Huh? Those let those I can see why those letters as a tag, nice and smooth. Yeah, yeah. It's it's not it's not too long. Mm. It's got great letters that balance. Mm. Also, he's just the, the, the mentality behind him is because I, cause I cause I love all you know all the all everything about graffiti. I love you know so mm. meaning like I love the hand styles. I love the throw ups. You know I love I love end to end pieces. I love style pieces. I love block letters. I love top to bottoms. Um, I love I love painting on subways. I love walls, rooftops. Mm. Um. I'll paint on any, I'll paint on anything that moves, right? Mm, mm. So, so this is always my my thought, you know. And then in the nineties, when you know we kind of came above ground a little bit, meaning like, you know, we were working downtown and people kind of knew. So I had to kind of, you know, I had to make Wayne more the commercial guy. Mm. Nose is more like the the style writer guy, and Hims is the bomber guy. Yo, you that's know? so sick. <laughs> that's so sick. You know, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, dude. So, and, and and for people, some people still don't know I write all three names or whatever, you know. But well, they do now. People, I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, hey. Um, interesting, just to circle back around the breaking the rules um, uh, idea there. Um, if you're, okay, so you spend years and years and years pr- progressing within your field and learning, you know, even the basic things like straight letters, you know, you get them right. They, they, it takes, time. It takes time. Yeah. So when do you time. break rules? When, 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 when do you feel like, yo, okay, I can break a rule? Or it's not even, a, I guess, subconsciously you break a rule. But when, when do you know that that's the right rule to break? I think, I think when you're being very repetitious about everything you're doing, and it might be getting a little boring to you, and maybe mm. you're, you're also the people around you. When people could. People could, ex- if when people could look and expect before you do a piece, if people could can can assume what you're gonna do before mm. you do it, and you know what you're gonna do, <clears throat> then it's time to break the rule. It's time, yeah. you know. And, and and in the nine in the eighties, I was looking at at people, and I was learning from Dero and everybody around me because I was I was trying to emulate what they were doing, mm. right? But if you look at my pieces in the nineties. There's some pieces that you're like, I don't even know where he's coming from. There's some yeah, pieces yeah. that people sometimes they see, they're like, yo, you did this? Mm. Like, yeah. They're like, yo, this shit's crazy, right? Yeah. Because in the 90s, I was still painting with guys like Dero and Doc mm. in the early 90s because 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 uh which which I was learning certain things from. But then I'd I'd paint with Reese, right? Mm. I'd paint with Reese and I'd paint with Ghost IRS oh. and those guys, right? And uh you know, yeah, Reese Reese got Mad Foundation. Yeah, yeah. But in the nineties, yeah. he was like, he was like, "Yo, yo, we got to get weird." And I was like, "What, what do you mean?" <laughs> so, yo, we just got to do. You know, we gotta we gotta let our feelings out, and we gotta we gotta really express ourselves and try to change what we've been doing. You know, let's get weird. You know, he used to call it getting weird. Oh God, so sometimes that's good. Sometimes I would paint. I'd paint some pieces with Reese and. I would sit around and draw for hours and try to do something mm. that I felt people wasn't doing, you know, playing with the, the the weights of the letters and certain things. And, you know, um, I think in the nineties, we did some really interesting pieces, you know, mm. meaning like some stuff that people could still look back and go, yeah, I don't know what they were thinking, but mm. it was cool. You know, some, some, some of the guys that really look up to what I've done, uh, globally, you know, they look at the '90s. They're like, "Oh, I like, I like the '90s." And then, like in the 2000s, we started trying to come back to foundation again because maybe sometimes you lose yourself and you go, you go, you're going too far. You go you, too you, far. You know? yeah. yeah. And some of the pieces, I was overkilling the pieces. And then also in the 2000s, what was going on was these massive walls with, with 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 background and it seemed like crews all they cared about was the background mm, and, I, and i know what and, you mean and, 
Yeah, yeah. If, 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 if people have been around for, for 20 years, they know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Like in the 2000s, like people cared about these massive productions and beautiful backgrounds. You know, I call it, I call it like, I would say like Lumet is one of the guys that really for sure brought the, brought that era brought that to the forefront and Dime like, really? as well. Dime was another one that did. Oh, that absolutely, as well. yeah. absolutely. But but Lumet was like before Dime. Yeah, yeah, he was yeah. right. True, and true. Dime started. Uh, I mean, and Lumet started slowing down, and Dime started really flourishing. But exactly right. Yeah. And I love I love that era. But then I would be on these productions, and I had to do my piece this small. Yeah, because you can't see. Piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you don't even see the writing. It's like right. because it's the, the so, whole thing's there, yeah. Right. And I, I was used to flexing my style. You know, mm. flexing. You know what I mean? Mm. So so I was I, in that in that era, I didn't do so well because, mm. because you know, I had to I, to do a small piece because you know what? My techniques wasn't as proficient as it is now. And I can say that because I know that. Even though mm. I thought I had been painting for years and I was good, I was I was used to doing a certain style, a, a certain size piece. Mm. And really flexing the style, right? And then what happened is I'm on these productions, and uh, I'd get I'd get invited very little because they they were like, oh well, if we invite Wayne, he's going to do his piece too big, and, <laughs> right? So 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 I was I was so I ended up painting, you know, uh, I would do those productions, but I, I would still go out and do track spots because I feel like on a track spot, I was able to flex using creative space, right? That's what it is. Oh yeah, I, I you know I go out to a track spot. I can get busy. You know, it was it was mm. very much like I was going to paint a subway with Dira, where like we did we did we did two panel pieces, and I had enough room to really flex my style, my technique, my colors. Mm. You can see my clouds, and then I can add a character, right? And um, I, I, one second, just to before you, because uh, can we just um get into space a little bit more? We'll continue a second, but I'd like to get a bit more into space because one thing about your pieces, like you say, is you're using that with restriction come creativity kind of thing where you've got like, and I can totally see how it works for you as a, as a writer. You really take, you take out a, a space with your, with your name, you go in. I'm very interested in your, in your theories of space. Yeah, no, I, I, I would, I, I could dominate when it comes to having, having that space, you know, so for me, um, I was able, if I'm able to flex the style, mm. then I'm also, then, then, and then what happens is like, I, I still have a very strong foundation when I'm doing my name big, which, which means there's a lot of movement in the piece, right? Mm. But then, but then, you know, like a lot, you know, if you talk to non-graffiti, non-graffiti uh, writers, people, you know, they say they're into art or whatever, mm. and they follow, they follow what they call street art and they consider graffiti to be street art or not street art, whatever. Yeah. That's another conversation. Right. And, and they, they're like, Oh, well, it looks all the same. I say, yeah, it looks all the same to you because you, cause you, cause you don't know the language. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I was yeah. like, yo, when you, when you really look at style and those guys that really do style and I tell people, when you really look at my piece, look for those subtlety details. Yes. If you really look yes. into the piece, and you see certain little things, you be like, "Oh, damn, that's kind of cool." Yeah, where's that coming from? Mm-hmm. And I feel that's what I what I bring to the game, really. Yeah, because 100%. once you've learned foundation, you have to also bring something to the table. It's kind of like it's kind of like you're coming to a Christmas dinner. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, right. Totally. You come and, and you're dressed up. You get everything is proper, right? Uh-huh. But but what did you bring? What did you bring? What are you giving back to the game? What do you bring? Yes, hundred percent. Right. And also, a you've lot, got a to. You people can do style, but what yeah. they bring? What, but what they they doing a, a rendition of what somebody else has done a million mm-hmm. times. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's and it's actually about and there's two things that come into play when when you you like you say you're coming to the party. You come into the Christmas party. You've got to know what everyone else has brought to the party before. You've got to right. know the code of conduct in the fucking party. You've right. got to know that, that there's rules. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Because you you don't you don't want to you don't want to you want you don't want to bring what they brought already. Yeah, exactly. You want to kind of bring and and even the subtle the subtleness of something different is going to be remembered. Oh hell yeah! By by those that really really or practitioners and and studiers of the culture. Exactly. There's people that, and, and those that also document it. There's guys that have been documenting and taking photos 
big ups to, to, to Steam156, by the way. Oh, hold tight, Steam. Yeah, now legend, legend. Big ups to, biggest, big ups to him mm. for documenting the culture, right? Yeah, 100%. Like, guys like that, they've seen so much graffiti, so much, so many generations, right? Crazy, and, yes. And they love, they love it all. They've traveled around documenting it. And they can, they can, they can also say, "Oh yeah, that's that's a great piece," you know. Mm-hmm. But then they can also, but the level of of uh, respect they give to certain guys, they know why they're giving that respect because they're like, "Damn, I know what he brought to to the table." And you people know, need no one pe- else you need might people know like it. that. You need people yeah. like that. You know? Yeah, and 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 it's, and it's important for 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 guys like me to keep those also keep those name alive. Mm-hmm. Um, and and also too, I think like when certain certain things die out from from a certain crew or a certain writer, then it's guys like us to to keep those things alive, bring them back, and mm. and, and put them in our pieces. So people, so those so those styles don't die. Do you think with the style thing? Because there's there's like you say, two thousands, the big wall productions, the big you know the background productions, um, and then. You know, as as um, as the political culture changes, as te- technology changes, our attentions go to what's happening on the streets, more bombing, more intensity. You know, we've all got COVID masks on, so we're all essentially burglars. We, you know what I mean? And, and things like that. There's also this trend of like um, an, a level of naivety, a naive culture, a naive style. And I, I, I was speaking to my boy across the other day, big up across, and, and we kind of was talking and it's like, you know, he said, I can kind of understand why... Uh, writers suddenly after like 30 years start simplifying their pieces to the point it's like it's almost like they are you joking like you did that in the 90s and now you do this now is it is it because they've they they they've done the foundation they've done their term they've done so much and just showing up and doing something that is completely anti completely naive completely like the complete opposite to what technically is supposed to be. Do you think there's a level of that? Just, I don't even call it complacency. Just a, just a kind of at peace with who you are, and you're just gonna like do something naive. Is that, is that, is that a thing? I mean, I mean, I mean, yes and no. I think, I think that's definitely one way to look at it. But also another way to look at it is like, you know, anyone knows that it's actually harder to do a simple, a proper simple piece mm. than that than a wild style piece. That's so true. It's true. I, the, I mean, if you, if the you devil's talk in to the guys detail. That really, that really master letters. You, you, it, it's not easy to do a simple piece. No, it's not. To, to do, to do it, to, to get the balance and just certain little, certain things in the proper place. Um, mm. to sketch it up, and 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 even even the color balance. The, mm. the, the color balance, like like, you know, you know, um, some some guys say that like if you if you did a black and white piece, right? If you did a black and white piece, it really shows how much style you got. Because it's, just, it's, just, it's just two colors. Yeah. Right? So yeah. so so to, to 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 answer your question, I think I think for some people, it's more like they've come to this point where something simple is also just as prolific as something that's wild style or mm. burning. Right. Mm. And then and then and then and then for some people. Really, what it is is it's it's there's just there's just a certain way that they're doing it that no one can duplicate. If 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 you look at, I would say, who has a really a really uh, amazing simple style that or something that may seem simple. If you if you look at some of Zephyr, Zephyr, one of the all time great mm. legends. Yo, he he does pieces sometimes. It just says Zeph. Yeah, that's right. But it's, I've seen it's these recently. So, it's so classic. Mm. So guys like guys like him, guys like Duster will do dust. He can do like a dust draw. You look, right. you look at you look at you look at Desi Des. Yeah, a, a, another guy. You look at you look at Scheme. Mm. They can oh. those guys can do pieces that are very simple mm. and just burn everything. They really yeah. can. You know, you know, you know, what I, you know what I mean. It's um, that ten thousand so, hours, isn't it? It's ten thousand hours reversed and just. Oh, those guys probably did a hundred thousand. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm. I mean, I mean, it's just 
you know, uh, also too, there's a guy, I really love the simplicity of the approach. There's a guy down in Australia, this guy's set. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. I've only uh, just been introduced to this, this man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I don't know if the viewers know this guy. He's down in a city called Sydney. Mm. And it's it's amazing the simplicity sometimes. He he, he could burn and he does. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But there's there's certain things he does in the placement of the piece and, and the way to let you know it's it, 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 it's it's just amazing. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. And and that's sometimes it takes other writers to remind us that like you don't always have to burn, man, because you're already burning with something simple. You know, poem, poem, poem is another one of those guys, man. Yeah, man. It's 100. so good. It's just yeah. so good. You know what I mean? That it's just, you know, I mean, and that's why when you look at the seventies or the mid seventies, you see the same thing in some of those what mm. what, what they call soft letters. Mm. You know, um, let's look at Fuzz. To me, in that era, Fuzz is one of the all time great writers. Right, yeah. he has many names. Fuzz. You look at part, part TDS. I mean, it's just, it's just amazing. Crazy. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, so I, I think when you, when you, when you're in the game as long as I've been in the game, and if you, you introduced to the game, and you've been in the game twenty years or ten years, mm. yo, you got to look at everything. Yeah. You got to look at every. If you really, and you got to look at the foundation first. Mm. So first, you got to look at New York subway era from the beginning to the end. Then yeah, you, you got to look at you got to look at Europe. You got to look at at, at at Paris. You got to look at the UK. You got to look at at Germany. You know, and then mm. and then you want to look you want to look around the world. You definitely want to look at Australia. They've had a culture. They've had a scene for a very long time. Mm. I mean, Hype magazine was out in full color. I believe in. 88, 89. Damn. Here's some knowledge for you, ladies and color, gentlemen. Four color zines. Wow, yeah. You know, all mm. that has... I remember has these, a, I remember, yeah. All that has a big play to do with, with inspirations because in, in people's, in artists, uh, in their journeys, right? Because whoever got that magazine, you might have got that magazine in, 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 in Tower Records, right? Mm, yeah, that's right. From the Tower Records. Mm. You might have got that magazine in Tower Records. Now, Tower Records was in, in the UK. Was it was in definitely Australia? Was definitely in uh, America, and also mm. was in Japan. Mm. So mm. these little these little zines and and people also trading photos in the mail. Remember that era? Oh yeah, of course. It, yeah, hundred percent. <laughs> I got. To, I think I got some at home still somewhere. Yeah. Yo, that shit. That whole pen pal shit did mm. did a lot for the culture. A lot of the the guys that are really killing the game or so called legends now. Mm. Those were those were like extensions of subway art mm. to those guys. And, and we got it. We've also we've also got to like because you you mentioned just before we went on WD Drax Elk etc. I know you uh, parlayed with them as international uh, pen pals when they came over to the states, right? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, the funny thing is they would come over, big ups Drax WD and you know, uh, Elk and Rest in Peace Robo. Um, oh, absolutely. Uh, so Drax, they would come over. I don't even know what made them come over, but they came over. They hooked up with Reese, A-OK. And then, like, um, Reese connected me with them, and I took them painting subways in the Bronx, uh, clean trains in that era. And uh, we've been friends ever since. So every time we went to Europe, every time I went to Europe with the COD crew, my man, when, shout out to when COD and, my man Sabar COD and Whips and uh, Hell yeah. obviously cover COD. Um, what would happen is, is we would we would link with those guys because we would just tell Drax, yeah, you know, we're gonna be in Sweden over here, and they're like, oh, okay, yeah, okay, oh, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll take a boat over or something, you know. Yeah, yeah. Now, I can't remember exactly how how those guys got got out of London. Just like writers you know, do, or, they just or, they just if, get or, there. Or, or if they were even allowed out of London, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they were doing so much crazy shit back then. So, so we would link up with them, and 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 we would we would we would we would we would do we would get 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 it going. And they, you know, they made us feel comfortable in in Europe because they had way more experience. They were really traveling early, man. Like mm. I, I, I definitely salute those guys. And I would say, 
in my opinion, unless someone could tell me different, to me, they're the first original graffiti travelers, guys that actually went abroad and painted graffiti in different cities and different countries and made that a thing. Now people 100%. call it a spraycation instead of a vacation. Like to me, those guys was the first to do it. And 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 we got we got the bug from them and we we really started doing it. And, and sometimes people was like, oh, why would you why would you want to go to another? I mean, especially that we were in the Mecca. Mm-hmm. A lot of guys in the Mecca in the 80s, late 80s, early, early uh 90s were like, oh, why would you want to go someplace and paint? We're in the Mecca. Is that snobbery? Was, like, was that snobbery back then? Yeah, I mean, you know, a lot you got I just think I think it, it kind of is. I mean, you know, I mean. You got to understand if you're, you're if you're in the Mecca. I mean, the thing about New York is everything's happening here. Yeah. And it's like London. Same thing. Like there's a there's a really amazing music scene. There's a really amazing fashion scene. There's mm-hmm. a really amazing graffiti scene. Why would you want? You know, the, 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 the average thinking of someone was like, oh, why would you want to leave? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. And for us, it was more like for me. It was more like, wow, they don't, they're doing graffiti over there. Well, damn, I want to see it. I want to see what they're doing. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, and um, when we started linking up with people, it was great. And when we, when, when we, when they were in their city and their country and we were still back in ours, we were trading photos. We were, you know, we we're pen pals. We had, I got a PO box and I was sent a, a stack of, of, of a letter with a stack of photos from the last three months or whatever. That's so good. Same. And we'd be able to see what people were doing in, 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 um, in different countries and be like, and, and what, what that did was it definitely inspired us to want to do more because, because mm. if the scene got kind of stale, I believe every scene has a high and low in every city. If mm-hmm. it got kind of stale and boring for you, you were getting, you know, we were getting a lot of inspiration from, from looking at Europe and, and looking at different places, mm. you know, just those photos coming in. Oh shit, guys are getting busy. You know, you're getting in a stack of photos from Bates or Save in, in, mm. in, in Copenhagen was like, oh, tight. oh shit. Okay. These guys are doing, look at what they're doing. They're doing illegal track sides mm-hmm. with, with, with color background with characters. Oh shit. I, right, I, right, we, we mm. still have to push. You know, it's never enough. You still have to, when, when you might have got lazy in your own right and you thought it was, you know, you thought it was too dangerous to stay at a spot and paint long enough, because I'm talking about all the legal stuff back mm-hmm. in the era. It's like, then, and you got, you got these type of photos and saw the details they were painting at night. Then it would push you to want to, want to um, do, do it as well and want to level up on it. You knew because yeah. you might have known you had the skill. That's the thing. But like, if you're not going out and producing it, then it's almost like it's non-existent. You know, that's what I mean? right. Like, you you know what I mean? Like, 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 like guys was telling me before I even started writing, we were drawing in black books, and I remember uh, a, a local writer around the neighborhood. He was like, "Oh, that's that's kind of cool what you got in your black book. You got skills, but it it doesn't count unless unless you you out you out." painting mm, yeah, doing it executing it yeah because he's he's like nobody's nobody's seeing it mm, it's true you know and, you know and it's I mean? a, that's purest the purest form of of creativity having the guts to go out there and do the thing to a public to, to an audience like that especially an international one like like you say some of these some of these creatives go the distance they travel and the, and and information is passed. If it wasn't for social media, like you say, it's these photo, photographs. You know, that's mad. Yeah. No. So 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 a lot of a lot of. I mean, now obviously the world's smaller because of social media, and people can share a lot more. And even even early travels when you went to a city, you had to know someone that knew someone in that city mm. to get what we call the plug, or to get to get to get you know, the juice or whatever, or yeah. I call it that I call it, you have to be in the network. Mm. Why? If you wasn't, if you wasn't somebody in your own city painting and you wasn't plugged in with somebody from another city that could, could refer you to say, Hey, when you, when you get to, uh, 
when you get to London, look up these guys, you know, or these guys going, oh, when you get to Sweden, look up chaos. That's the guy, yeah. Yeah. you know, yeah. like you had to be, you had to already also have dominated your own city. You had to be somebody in your own city. Yeah, trusted. You couldn't, you couldn't, yeah. you couldn't be a nobody. Yeah, that's right. Wow. You had, you, and, and, and not meaning a nobody, like you're not nobody. Everybody's somebody. But I'm saying like you had to put in the work in your own city. That's what yeah. I am. Yeah, 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 you exactly. Know, you you had to dominate that. In your own city, mm. people were like, oh, well, you got the red carpet in our city. You know, God, and, that's, and that's the way it worked. Yeah. That's you know, it's, it's, it's like a it's like a, a a micro society. Do you think do you think nowadays, like you say, the world's getting smaller, communications are getting more frequent. That network that you talk about, of course, there are anomalies and people that work on very, you know, very low levels of communi- uh, communication and don't, you know, they want to be invisible. But in this day and age, do you feel like that network suffers? through the, the opportunity of so much communication or do you think is a good thing? I mean, it's, 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 it's yes and no, man. Now it's, it's so hard to say because, you know, it's, I feel like we have to just move with the times. We can't worry about that. That, that network was very important for that time. And people needed to know who, who these guys were like WD and guys like Reese, guys like myself, guys like Cento, mm. um, uh, guys like like Tad School were, were were big because they did traveling. And oh, and Moaz Goldie as well. Hold tight, Moaz. Yeah, Go- yeah, yeah. Goldie would come over to New York and paint a train. Mm. Um, guys like Risk would come over from the West mm. Coast and paint a subway with, with with AOK. Like in the beginning, in those important eras, if if these these guys didn't link up, if if there was no network, they wouldn't mm. be what it is now. It'd be something different. Because 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 these guys kept it pure, which inspired a whole generation. And when when the world did get smaller from the internet's and your blogs, then it was easier. And now every everyone has access to, to everyone. Yeah, that's right. Right. Oh, it's not like it's now. not like it's like how you did this thing with Master Ace because you really know him. Mm-hmm. And then you, and then and then you say, oh yeah, you what could I look up with that guy? You know, maybe I can totally. talk to this guy Wayne. And then totally. he reached out to me. That's that's the truest form of the network. Mm, true, exactly. Right? It's not like you you send me a DM in the DM. Yo, yeah. yo, man, I like what you're doing. Been following you. I mean, I was a Wayne, I was a Wayne fan from the jump. To you know, to be you know honest, like, it, but it's just that, like you say, the connect. It's almost like a a seal of approval. It comes from a reliable source, and that relies. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that that's has to come I'm from I'm a not, place. Right. And I'm not saying that like, because the world's small is whack. I'm not saying that because that's not my my insight at all. I, I'm very open minded because, you know, I feel like that's what Europe have gave me. You know, they have gave they they you know, I was like this guy growing up in the Bronx, very like, yo, fuck that. Fuck that. You know, we, you know, mm. we got to do it this way. You know, and I started traveling, you know, to Germany and, you know, uh, Scandinavian and, mm. and Amsterdam and everywhere. And you know, by meeting a lot of Europeans and writers and they, uh, they, like I said, they, 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 they welcome us with open arms, the red carpet. Mm-hmm. Right. So then on my end here in the U S in New York in the nineties, I, I catered to a lot of Europeans, a lot of guys from the UK, if they came and then they wanted to paint. I was your guy mm-hmm. because, because, because I felt like it was my duty to do that because they had already extended the open arms and, and mm-hmm. the love that they were showing. It's only right that you reciprocate. I didn't, mm-hmm. I didn't owe anybody anything and they didn't owe me anything, but you know what? We're doing it for the culture. We love to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're with somebody in, in a city and they know that city, you, you're going to win. You That's know right. what I mean? Like you're a tourist and you got, you got a local tour guy. You're going to have the best fucking time. Key and, to the and, city. Yeah, totally. <laughs> I love that you know, shit. And, and that's what we did, you know what I mean? And now, you know, with 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 social media, anyone can hit somebody up and say, "Hey, man, I'm in the city. Yo, you want to paint a piece?" And that's how people do it now. But mm. but but back then it didn't exist. So you know, um, I'm I'm just giving props to where props is due, man. And 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 that's what I feel. I feel that's all all we do is giving props where props is due, and also mm. educating people on 
how it was done mm. and that that we got to be grateful for those that did it like this, man. You know what I mean? Because so, yeah, so true. It, it, it was it was a whole different time. You know what I mean? So immersive. Um, and and who knows season. what's gonna, who knows what the future is going to hold? Who knows how smaller, you know, technology just keeps getting making the world smaller and smaller. Um, and uh, this podcast, is, you know, it's important what you're doing, you know, hopefully a hundred years from now, people will be able to tap in and uh, oh, hell yeah. get some, some solid information um, so they could document the culture even more. Mm, life's short, man. And, and yeah. our time on here is, is precious. It, it, it's an immersive scene. And sometimes, I don't know, man, it's, I, I was just coming to this. It's, it feels sometimes like once you dip your toe in, all of a sudden it sucks you in. And like, like you say, you could come over here and just chill with me or WD or whatnot. You know what I mean? Like you could wake up in the morning and go to every single hall of fame next morning, you're connecting with another writer. Next thing you're painting. Then in the evening, you're going to be looking to sketch in a day. And you just, you just, before you know it, like the whole world's just con- you consumed you and you're going down this rabbit hole of like oh, infinite, infinite. Yeah. You're going, you're going to you're going to all the right places that the scene is happening yeah. without you even without you even knowing that the scene is happening. Like, yeah, 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 you become it. it. <laughs> yeah, totally. You know? Oh, hey, I I know your time is running, or should I say, our time is running. Um, <laughs> so I got I got to do a little plug here. Go do it, yeah. So so I'm gonna I'm gonna plug Ooh. my book, my first book, which is self published. That's incredible. Um, history history is made in the streets. Yo, so if you're if I was like if you're if you're listening or watching, do jump on the YouTube if you want to check out the, the levels here on this book. It's looking sick. No, this 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 book is 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 for all your barbers and everybody that really wants, you know, it's 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 maybe at least three decades of of just you know oh painting my. in different places and painting everything. Um God. really great photography. Um also you can get wow. it in London. Yeah, where you can get it in London, I believe. Uh, it's a guy that has a shop called The Layup. Okay. So, okay, he was closed during the, the, the pandemic, and he reached out to me, and I was able to send him yeah, a, a, a box. So he, wow. has, he, has a, he has about 20-something copies. Um, show him some love. A really yeah. good dude. Um, and, and he has the book. Also, you can, you can, you can cop a book on, on, the, um, on, on my web shop, which is called Three Times Dope, which is at, uh, after after my favorite one of my favorite rap groups my favorite Come rap on. Group, my favorite rap group is actually uh is actually uh EPMD that's of why course. that's why i always wear bucket hats but 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 really three times dope out of philly was some of the, some of the dopest dopest guys and that, that's you know, that's a name that i have not heard in a long time and you're absolutely right three times dope were awesome i told you yeah yeah he is like. that Nicholas one yo these dudes I mean, talk about originality and creativity, yep. like, you know, and I actually, I actually met them one time and, and did some shirts for them back in the day. He's a big fan of their, their work. And by, by no means, my, 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 my website's a tribute. I don't, I don't do anything that says three times dope. It's just the name of a, of a web shop because, because my actual company is called Writer's Bench, but so many people have, have, mm. have, 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 have abused it that I, <laughs> that I went somewhere different. Um, but you can pick, you can pick up the Hems book. History Amazing. is made in the streets, and um, you wow. know, just pick, you know, if, if you want to support the culture, you pick it up and and you spread the word. And um, I got some T-shirts and some originality stuff. If you want to buy affordable art by someone that you know is, is a practitioner of the game, you go there. You know, one thousand um, percent. Or they just check your podcast. You know, they just keep checking back and support it that way. So, you know, my brother. You know, I appreciate brother. that. Well, you better jump on board, ladies and gentlemen. You know exactly where to get it. Anyone with a website called Three Times Dope definitely gets my seal of approval. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> cool. Um, wow. What a podcast has been. Thank you so much, Wayne. You're a don. Thank you. Wayne, one in the house. Hey, hey, kill it, kill it, kills, man. Keep doing what you're doing out there. And and um, I hope I hope you didn't stop beatboxing, though. <laughs> I got you, brother. I got you. <laughs> keep, keep doing that, man. And, and, and hey, don't be surprised if I knock on your door in London, man. Don't forget me, man. Yo, tea I, in the pot, I, I, drinks I, I in the travel, fridge. Man. Come on. Okay? Yo, so, I, so I, might, I might make a personal appearance, man. I'm due for a trip back in the in the UK. Um, big ups to everyone out there. Um, 
big, big ups just everyone doing their thing. Uh, uh, um, big ups to Goldie. You know, what all I mean? day. This 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 guy is like he's he's such a, a good dude and you know a real legend in the game and uh, for, for what for what he's did in the culture and the music and I mean and 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 just just even London itself, man. They they've given a lot when it comes to music and 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 fashion to the game and um hey man i had a good time when i was out there the last time in in brick i like brick lane and you know Puerto yeah. Vino, so, so so big up to everybody hope hope to see you guys uh and, and kels thank you so much anything you need man just shout me out man i'm here from the bx it's your boy the bronx bomber wayne one cod hold tight hold tight my guy wayne one next time you're here Tea in a pot, drinks in the fridge, cigars, <laughs> shit on the <laughs> table. I got you, I got you, man. Ladies and gentlemen, you know what it is, Killer Keller Podcast. Sharing is caring. Don't talk to anyone. I wouldn't, all right? Um, it's a big world out there. Be careful, all right? You stay lucky, people. Don't talk to anyone. I wouldn't. Peace. Peace.